Hello my lovies and welcome back to Crazy But Not Dangerous and we are doing a pre-Super Bowl warm up dinner tonight. Yay hooray. Hopefully giving you all kinds of inspiration. You know, giving you those good Super Bowl feels. Yeah, I don't care who wins. I don't have a favorite team and um, yeah, I like the Super Bowl because there are great sales and pretty darn good commercials and you know a halftime show yippee skippy and everything else well i like the food and the friends and the food yeah hot dig hot diggity anyhow we're gonna make all kinds of things today stay tuned so the first thing that i have done is taken my chicken livers and i have washed them very thoroughly for about three minutes under cold water because a lot of people say that they don't like chicken livers but really and truly they don't enjoy that sometimes metallic taste that chicken livers can have beef liver too um so rinse it very very thoroughly about three minutes and i got in there with my hands you know and made sure that yeah we had rinsed them very well in that process i'm also looking to make sure my livers are good looking yeah I don't want any brown ones. I don't want any gray ones. And if you get a yellow one, yeah, don't eat that. Something has gone terribly wrong. I also don't want ones that are too terribly fatty. Yeah. All the same rules apply to chickens as they do to humans. There you go. So I have rinsed them very thoroughly. All of these have passed inspection. And if you've never seen a chicken liver, well, you know, it's not dissimilar to a human liver. It's lobed, and um, that's that's what it looks like. Anyhow, um, mine were not very fatty. If you have some fat on yours and you want to take that off, go right on ahead. But I'm going to go ahead and cut mine in half. Over here, I have about a cup of milk. And I'm doing this first. This is my first preparation for my big game day celebration um, because I want these to soak at least one hour in that milk because that milk will help neutralize some of those you know metallic tastes oh this chicken had a really good liver look how that's a, that's a big one hardly any fat on it yeah that's that oh that's a shame that that chicken probably would have lived a long long time but I'm going to enjoy that because that looks fantastic. This is um, a delicacy and one of the things that's still relatively affordable. Now, when I was growing up, this was really affordable. Chicken livers, chicken gizzards, and chicken hearts. That was something that my mother would make. And I guess we just didn't realize then, you know, what part of the bird we were eating. We weren't quite sure, I don't think. Now, you don't have to cut these in half. Um, yeah, if you like yours big and chunky and meaty, baby, you just go for it. I'm not going to say no. I asked Melissa if she wanted if she wanted to stay for, for our snacky dinner tonight, and she said no. She was going to pass, that she wasn't into the chicken livers anymore now that she's an adult. So, yeah, she's going to... She's going out with some friends, going to live it up, going to go have her best life. Good for her. Hope you're having your best life, baby. All right, we are down to the end. So we will just be enjoying these chicken livers. There we go. Now this plastic container, I don't want to reuse it, to be honest with you. Yeah, it's had, it's had potentially hazardous, uh, you know, cross-contamination kind of things. I'm going to put the lid on this one, and I'm going to be A-OK -okay with throwing this away. Oh, I rhyme. All right, this I'm going to pop into my refrigerator because it is chicken, and I want to use all safe food handling procedures, so I want to keep this out of the danger zone, but I want to let this soak in this milk for a good hour longer if I can hold off. I'm going to put this in the kitchen and then I'm going to go ahead and just give my work surface a little sanitization. Safe. Be safe. Yeah, it's okay to be crazy, but don't be dangerous. Not with chicken. 
If I had really considered it, I would have put this in something that has a lid so that I wouldn't have to use plastic wrap or anything like that. But yeah, I'm going to go ahead and give this a wrap up. Otherwise, I would use one of those food storage containers. Um, the container it came in isn't quite big enough. But I'm going to put some plastic wrap on this. I've got it a safe place in the refrigerator um, so I don't have to worry about anything bumping it or spilling it because I don't want to clean that up. I'd be a mess. While my livers are soaking, I'm going to go ahead and get some other things ready. You know, because I want to be prepared. want to be on the ball. Yeah, a step ahead of the game. So I have a recycled bag that I'm going to be using. This used to have tortillas in it. Now it's just clean and ready to be used. Yay, hooray. And because I am going to be dredging potentially hazardous, you know, foods, those chicken livers in here, I like to use one of these because then I don't feel bad about throwing it away. It doesn't have a hole in it. Yeah. So I check for a hole, you know, by making it into a balloon, giving it a few good puffs, and then seeing if it'll hold air. If it holds air, we're in like Lynn Bay. So I have checked just some regular all-purpose flour. I'm going to go ahead and put one half cup, one cup, and a cup and a half. A cup and a half of flour. And I know you're thinking that seems like an awful lot for just, you know, a pound of chicken livers. It is. It is. I'm going to, you know, since we hardly ever fry, and we're gonna have the we're gonna have everything out. Maybe I'm gonna make some onion rings too. I know we're going all out today. We're shooting the moon. Yeah. Just I don't even know what we're gonna do. I have some cornstarch here. Yes, I keep mine in an old coffee mate container because I buy it in bulk, and this is nice and um, you know waterproof and airtight and all those good things. I'm going to put one tablespoon, two tablespoons in of the cornstarch in with my flour. That way it'll get extra crispy and delicious. Can't beat that. Mm -mm. No, if you're going to fry, you got to do it upright, baby. And I don't know, maybe I fry once or twice a year, you know, it's got to be, yeah, it's got to be good celebration for me to get it on with the fryer, you know. Absolutely. All right. I've got Old Bay seasoning. This is an all-purpose seasoning. Good for crab, shrimp, and chicken. Hot diggity. And I'm telling you, it's good on those onion rings, too. I'm going to put a lot in here. I'm going to put one whole tablespoon of that Old Bay seasoning. I'm going to do it. I'm not worried about it one bit. And then I also have some of the black pepper. Let's see if I can get this baby open. I got to get over to the store. I forgot on my grocery list. I kept thinking, what am I forgetting? What am I forgetting? And you know what? Anymore, if I don't add it right away when I'm thinking about it to a grocery list, if I don't write it down on something, well, we're going to have to wait. So I'm still using this and the lid still stinks. I'm going to put about half a tablespoon of the ground pepper in there. And I'm going to get this a little, a little shimmy shimmy, a little shaky shake. Get that all incorporated together. I can take a look at it, see if that looks like enough. If it doesn't look like enough, if I can't see some seasoning in there, then I'm going to add some more all day. Ooh, that's real close. I think maybe just like maybe a half tablespoon more. That's it. That's it. That should be delicious. And that's got everything in it. Onion powder, garlic powder, paprika. Yeah. All the things. Celery salt. Spices, including red pepper, black pepper, and paprika. And then, you know, some secret stuff. I don't know what it is, but I know that I love it, and that's just fine with me. Give this one more shimmy shimmy. And I like to dredge in one of these bags because, yeah, it saves me on a lot of cleanup. And, you know me, I hate to clean. It's the pits. 
All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get this stuff put away because this is going to be more than enough um, for my dredge for the um, onion rings and for the chicken livers, yay, hooray. Now I think that chicken livers, chicken gizzards, chicken hearts, all fried up are delicious, but you know what they need? They need a special dipping sauce. That's always the best part as far as I'm concerned. And whether you're having chicken livers or you're just serving chips and dip, I think that this dip, this sauce, is really great for every occasion, not just, you know, the big game. So I have a package, an eight ounce package of cream cheese here. I'm gonna go ahead and just cut that in half. I am gonna be making a half batch of this dip today. And it's a dill pickle dip, and I'm making half because um, I'm going to do something with the other half. And we're going to have a couple of different dips. So I don't think that for our household and our um, celebration that we need, you know, that much dip. We're not going to run through it. So I'm half in the recipe. And I'll show you the half recipe. It's easy to double. Just use, you know, an 8-ounce block of cream cheese and then eight ounces of sour cream. Adjust the spices as necessary. So yeah, I've got some sour cream. And yep, we've got plenty of time on this one, February 23rd, I love it. Let's go ahead and put eight ounces in there. Um, this fourth ounce, uh, this one fourth cup will fit in here the best. And so that's what I'm using to measure out my sour cream. Because I want equal parts, more or less. You know, if you've got a little extra sour cream in there, I'm not going to be mad at it, not one bit. All right, there we go. And let's go ahead and clean this out. I'm going to use my hand mixer today because I'm a little bit tired and I don't feel like doing all that stirring. So I got my hand mixer out today. Yesterday I was grating cheese in my Roboku and the blade broke the top flew off got jammed up in there we got it unjammed and the roboku is fine but the blade is shot so i've got a new one on order thank goodness i can buy spare parts and i'm just going to cream this sour cream and the cream cheese together um, until it's well incorporated be right back all right that looks delicious and well incorporated move on let's move on to the seasoning that's my favorite part so I have a little bit of dried dill if you have the delicious fresh by all means use it I'm gonna put in one teaspoon of the dried dill that's my favorite herb I'm also gonna put in one teaspoon of parsley flakes And one teaspoon of the granulated garlic. Hello, Gilroy. Wherever I use dry spices or dry herbs and you have fresh, go for it, baby. It's your kitchen. You make the rules. And if you like fresh, if you can afford fresh, if you have fresh available to you, well, go for it. I'm not going to have hard feelings onion powder <clears throat> pardon me and about one teaspoon of that onion powder too it's gonna be delicious it smells fantastic already let's go ahead and put the secret ingredient in now this is why I bought my cloths and still pickles because I think this dip is super good I think Clausen's are the way to go in this. I've made it with pickles from the dollar store before, and they are still good, but there is something special about the crunch of a Clausen's pickle. Now, if you make Lithuanian half sour pickles, um, they will taste like Clausen's. They will have that delicious crunch, but you know, I didn't get on, I wasn't on top of it. I didn't have my life together last week. I mean, I barely got my life together this morning. Come on, dill pickles, open on up. You know, I appreciate all of these safety techniques. 
all of these extra plastics and wraps and what have you to keep me safe, to keep people from tampering my, with my food. But I'd also like to be able to get into them, you know? It's like there's childproof caps on that medicine. I don't want to have, you know, an incident while I'm waiting for my medication to finally open. All right. Oh, okay. Hey, that wasn't bad at all. Yeah, last time I had to open a jar, I thought I was going to get a hernia. All right, I'm going to grab some of these pickles out of here. I'm using my little specimen tweezers that I like to uh, keep here in the kitchen because I just think these get the really good hold on those pickles. Plus, you got to use them for something, you know. So there we go. I've taken about three pickles out, and we'll see if that's enough. We'll see if I need more or less. And then I'm just going to go ahead and give those a little chippity chop. Yeah, this knife has some cream cheese on it, but it's going to go in the cream cheese, so it's going to be all right. It'll be okay. There we go. And fantastic. And then I'm going to give them a smallish dice. I still want them to be recognizable, but I also want them to be really good when they're holding on to that um, chicken liver or to a potato chip or, you know, in my case, onto a piece of celery because that's what I'm going to have. Yes, please, and thank you. I am going to have um, two chicken livers. That's what I have determined would be a suitable portion for me. Two chicken livers, one onion ring, plenty of veg, and a huge glass of water. Because, you know, the salt. But every once in a while, you just got to live it up. You got to celebrate. I can't always be eating, you know, the rabbit food while Melissa and Andrew are having double cut bombs with cheese. Everything in moderation. So yeah, I don't think two chicken livers are going to be too many carbs. And I don't think that one onion ring is an unreasonable amount. And then plenty of salad, you know, because you got to get your fiber in. You got to get your, if you want to be regular, you got to have your fiber. And if you want to be happy, you got to be regular, baby. Anyhow, chop these up as finely as you want. And then let's go ahead and give this all a stirring. I don't want to use the mixer anymore because I don't want it to beat my pickles to death. Plus, this is nice and incorporated now. So yeah, it's got we got room. We got plenty of maneuverability in here. Plenty of herbs and spices. Yes, please and thank you. And then I'm going to go ahead and roll in my pickles. You could put a little diced red onion in here. That would be spectacular. And then I am going to just save this little tiny, maybe that's a tablespoon of pickle. And I'm saving that to be the garnish on top. Because when I make a dip, I kind of want people to know what's in there. Even if it's just Andrew and I, I think a little garnish just says, I love you. I, I took a little extra time to make this, you know, beautiful for you as well as tasty. You know, happy Valentine's Day in the future. All right, I'm going to get a little bowl for it. And I got a spoon because I want a taste test. Oh, I know what I forgot. I'm so glad I tasted it because I forgot the most important part of dill pickle dip is a little bit of the pickle juice. Yeah, it tasted good, but it needed a little bit of that brine. Yeah, absolutely. Let me go ahead and just swish that all together. Get that good. Uh, see, that's a much better consistency too. I was thinking that that looked awfully chunky looked awfully thick and that it would need, you know, a little bit of something when I served it, maybe. 
yes please and thank you delicious I put in I don't know maybe that was about two tablespoons of pickle juice let's give it another taste see how we're doing All right, it needs just a little bit more pickle juice. It needs a little bit more of that tang. All right, so maybe that's three tablespoons total. And that is a good amount. I would also say that this would be an excellent dill pickle salad dressing. You know, I've bought that dill pickle salad kit before. And I was always disappointed because there were no pickles in there. I had to add them. Okay. That's good. Yay, hooray. Fantastic. Okay. Let's go ahead and put this into my little white bowl here. And this is a pretty substantial amount of dip. I don't think that um, it needs a darn thing. I actually think that this is even pretty good size for a small, you know, party. Maybe four, six, even eight people. If you were having more than one dip, you know, you might not want to make a 16 ounce uh, plus dip for your guests. You might not need that much and you might not want the leftovers. I'm going to go ahead and adjust. Give this a little dill pickle garnish right on top. Yay, hooray. All right, that's tasty. Tasty and delicious. I think that looks beautiful. That's going to be good with vegetables, chips, dip, and especially with those chicken livers. Yes, please, and thank you. You know, a little bit of grated red onion would really just do this. Yeah, I don't think I have any. But yeah, I think that looks fantastic. Yay, hooray. All right, we've got a game day tip. Moving right along. I'm also going to make the honey mustard um, dressing, dipping sauce, whatever you want to call it. Andrew asked for it. Um, we are going to have some salads. And so, you know, I love honey mustard. He loves honey mustard. And I think this would also be extremely good with the chicken livers. And, and definitely good with the onion rings. Yeah, yeah, you can have ranch dressing. You can have ranch dressing any day of the week. But honey mustard, and I'm making the full batch because like I said, we want some for tonight. We also want plenty for um, later in the week too. And this stores beautifully. So I've got about a cup of mayonnaise. And I'm going to add about three tablespoons of the yellow mustard. One, two, three. Yes, please and thank you. There we go. I'll get that stirred together. This comes together so easily and really is very inexpensive. Especially if you find your mayonnaise on sale or maybe you just buy some mayonnaise from Dollar Tree. I'm all right with that. I also have some spicy ground mustard or some Dijon would be fine or just another tablespoon of the yellow would be a-okay with me. And I'm going to add about a tablespoon of the spicy brown. Oh, we're down to the dregs again. Come on, baby. Get it together. There we go. We got it. We got it. Whole grain mustard, like a nice English mustard, would be fantastic. Andrew wanted some from Aldi the other day. It was like eight dollars, and I told him that uh, we'd have to we'd have to think about it. That's what my mother always said when it was going to be an elk. Well, we're going to have to think about that. 
and, I, and I'm thinking for eight dollars, you know, I could buy like a whole chicken, not just a little four ounce container of all the English mustard, even though it looked fantastic. All right, I've got some raw unfiltered honey, and this was one of my free items over at the Albertsons. I'm not mad at that one darn bit. I'm going to add about two tablespoons of that, and then we're going to check this for sweetness. We may, we might revisit it. It might happen. We can always add more. Always. But you got to taste your food. Like before, with the dill pickle juice. I almost forgot. If I hadn't tasted it, I would have been serving it and thinking to myself, something's missing, something's missing. And, you know, it's really hard to take it away from your guests. And I've got to go back to the kitchen and add my dill pickle juice. They already think I'm crazy. They, they don't need confirmation. You know what I mean? All right, got some of the onion powder. And I'm going to add about a half tea, a te, about a half teaspoon of the onion powder in here. There we go. You know, the granulated garlic. Hello, Gilroy. And I know that's twice in one video. But if you ever smelled that town, you would know they, they deserve it, baby. They deserve the howdy. And about a half teaspoon of the granulated garlic. <clears throat> Pardon me. And then we're just going to give this a good stir up. Get it all incorporated. And it's a pretty good consistency. I think that's a good cons consistency. Not only for dipping, but also for, you know, going on top of a salad. Yes, please and thank you. Okay. Now, time for my favorite part. And that's the taste test. I should have got a bigger spoon because I keep almost losing this one. I don't want to lose it. I'm going to hold it. I'm just going to hold it. There we go. Oh, that's so good. That could use, actually, a little bit more of the yellow mustard. I'm going to say another tablespoon. So that would be four tablespoons of the yellow mustard, one tablespoon of the spicy brown, you know, five tablespoons of mustard total for that one cup of mayonnaise. I know it seems really strange that mayonnaise is the base for a honey mustard. It seems counterintuitive, but yeah. Oh, that's perfect. That's perfect. Yep, that's delicious. Fantastic. Now, you might taste it and think it needs a little bit more honey. Baby, add it. Add what you want. Remember that recipes are based on someone else's taste. Yours may be entirely different. So make it your way. I'm going to transfer this into this mason jar. And, yep, we will just be able to get some of that out. And have that with our salads, with our veg, with our chicken livers, with those onion rings. I am really looking forward to the onion rings. I love them. One time my mother was in the hospital and she wanted out really, really badly. She wasn't having it. She was in a foul mood. I need a spatula. Anyhow, my mother was in the hospital. She was in a foul mood. She was not the world's greatest patient. I can tell you that. And the doctor did not want to release her. And she was throwing a absolute hissy fit. Just a temper tantrum. Like if we had been kids and thrown a temper tantrum like that, um, she would have busted her butts. Yeah. Anyhow, she had that look. You know, if you threw a temper tantrum, and probably she had that look that's like, you're going to get it as soon as we're somewhere where nobody can see me. Um, yeah. And I said to her, well, Mom, I'll tell you what. If you'll stay just one more night, that we will go to Applebee's. That was her favorite. We will go to Applebee's and we will get you 
a large order of onion rings with barbecue sauce. That was, oh, you have to have the barbecue sauce with onion rings. You just have to. If you've never tried it, you should try it. Anyhow, that's what she would tell people. I'll get you a large order of onion rings and I'll go back to the house and I'll bring the deck of Rook cards. Have you ever played Rook? It's really fun. And my family's favorite pastime and we're very cutthroat about it, very competitive. Anyhow, I'll bring the Rook cards and, you know, Melissa and I and Sherry and Patty will all sit here and, you know, we'll keep you company tonight. You won't be alone at the hospital and we will eat onion rings and play Rook if you will stay for one more night. And it was really in her best interest to stay for one more night. She really needed, you know, a lot of help. And yeah, she wasn't doing so great. And, and well, I guess that sounds all right. I guess I can stay if I don't have to be here alone. And you're going to bring the root cards and you're going to bring the onion rings. And if you forget the barbecue sauce, that's it. I'm packing my bags. And I'm going to call an Uber and go home. And I thought, well, Mom, you don't have a smartphone and you don't call an Uber. But you know what? She would pay somebody out in the parking lot. She would just, little old lady go, I've got 20 bucks if you'll take me home. I only live three miles from this hospital. But I'll give you 20 bucks if you'll take me. I know my mom. She would have done it. She wanted, there was, yeah, whatever she wanted, that's what she got. She was a very determined lady. And that was one of the things that I most admired about her. Anyhow, yeah, this honey mustard, got a lot. Super excited about that. That would make a great dip. Vegetables, chicken livers, chicken strips, hot wings. Yeah, vegetables, vegetables. Get your vegetables on, baby. They're good for you. All right, we've got my little fryer set up here. So I have my medium um, pan stock pot here. I have my candy thermometer. I have it on 375 degrees. That's where the uh, marker is. I have about two and a half inches of oil inside of my pot. Not more than half full because you need to allow room for the oil to expand as it heats so that you're frying safely and that you don't overflow and have a grease fire. Also, as you are adding cold, possibly wet items into the hot grease, that that will expand even further. Safety first, not more than half full. Be crazy, but not dangerous. We're already living on the edge having fried food. I also have my spider already, and that's really great when you're frying because you can just easily scoop them up without worrying about you know, knocking all the delicious breading off because that's delicious. I've also got a pair of tongs just in case that doesn't work out. Set these over here. I have a pan with some paper towel on it. And as they're coming out, I'm gonna go ahead and put my things, my fried items, right here onto this paper towel. I have my oven preheated to 200 degrees. Now paper towel should not burn at 200 degrees, but that will keep my stuff warm as I'm going through my various, you know, um, fried food options. Because we're gonna have the onion rings, we're gonna have chicken wings, and we're going to have um, chicken livers. And I'm going to indulge in just a little tiny bit of all of them. I've also made a great big salad and plenty of veg on the side to go with that. We're just having crudite. We're having snacky dinner. I can get behind it. The last thing, when I am getting ready to fry something, I have one of these Tundra. It's a um, fire extinguisher in like a little spray can. These are so easy to use. And these are pretty inexpensive, usually around $20, $25 over at your home improvement store. I go to the depot, um, yeah, Lowe's, Home Depot. They have them at Walmart, they have them at True Value. And um, I buy a new one every year. I keep this under my kitchen sink right up front so I can grab it. But if I'm frying, yeah, it's gonna sit right on the, co on the, on the countertop next to the coffee pot. So if I have a grease fire, I'm just going to 
yeah this is good for grease fires fabric and wood and also electrical fires and it's small but mighty like me be careful safety first be crazy not dangerous I have my oil starting to heat up and I want it to get to 375 degrees. I've got my um, burner on about a six. That's going to be like medium high, that kind of thing, a six or a seven. And all I'm going to let it do a gentle warm up. I've gone ahead and I've cut my onions into rings, pretty good sized pieces. I did one pretty good size onion and honestly that's going to be more than enough because we're just having we're just having a little fried food you know super bowl party over here tonight andrew and i and we'll probably have leftovers for tomorrow but um anyhow i also have my um, dredging flour that i put together all seasoned before I've gone ahead and scrambled a couple of eggs in here. Just give them a good whisk up. And we are all set. As that comes up in temperature, I'm gonna fry my onion rings first because they are the least flavored item that I am going to fry. And I'm gonna fry those first. I found these chicken wings in my freezer. They are still frozen. And that is just A-OK -okay with me. I'm going to go ahead and just give them some seasoning salt. Yep, just going to season salt these babies all up. And I am going to get a little bit of buffalo sauce going for them. I'm going to just to toss them in that buffalo sauce when they come out of the fryer, when they're all set. But that'll, get, that'll give them a little seasoning, a little leg up. But these are pretty big. I'm kind of impressed with their size. So I've got about eight pieces in here. From frozen, chicken wings will take about 15 minutes to cook. And we love chicken wings, but we love them fried. And, and yeah, we'll eat them anyway, but every once in a while I tell him I'm gonna fry chicken wings and his heart just melts. I'm like, please, you know, that's why we don't eat very much fried food. Yeah, heart healthy. But today we're splurging. We're going all out. We're shooting the moon. Yay, hooray. All right, I'm going to let my oil come up in temperature. I am not going to walk away from it. I'm going to keep a very close eye because we can go from, you know, it's all right and everything's okay to burning my house down in a New York minute. And, and yeah, I'm getting a new roof. I don't need a whole new house. All right, we are almost there. We are almost heated up. I'm keeping my eagle eye on it because I want to keep that temperature at 375. That's going to be my optimal cooking. I'm going to dump all of these onions right into that egg mixture. Yes, please, and thank you. Give these a little toss up. Now, you could use breadcrumbs. You could use panko. Any of these things would be delicious. I've just got, you know, a little bit of flour, a little bit of the cornstarch, and a little bit of the seasoning right on in here. And I'm going to go ahead and just put these right into the bag. We used to have fried food night. When we were young and in love, we would have it on a Friday night while we watched X-Files. And we'd have a little snuggle on the couch, a little cuddle, and eat some fried foods and watch X-Files and, you know, do whatever. Anyhow, we don't do that anymore because we're old and we can't take that much fried food anymore. But we would. We would have onion rings and mozzarella sticks and, you know, the whole nine yards and get our fried food on. Yeah. Now, now we're old and we take statins and try to avoid the fried foods and you know, too much cholesterol. I'm going to give these just a toss up here in this bag. Get those all coated, all yummy and delicious. Keeping all of that debris, you know, off my counters as much as possible. 
What are we at? Oh, okay, we're coming up on it. We're coming up on it. We need a couple more seconds. I'm gonna let these just hang out in here. They'll be fine. And then we're gonna drop them in. Yeah, they're gonna be, so, oh, they're gonna be so good. They're gonna be so good. Do I have everything that I need? I've got my seasonal. I wanna put that over here because as these come out of the oil, I wanna make sure I'm getting just a tiny bit of salt on them. Yeah, we're not going low carb. We're not doing low fat. We're not doing, yeah, we're doing fried food night. Yay, hooray. Okay, we're at 375, and I am going to go ahead and throw my onion rings in. Well, don't throw them. And also, what you'll want to do is not, not put them in too far from the top. You kind of want to just gently lay them down in the oil. Not from too far away, because you don't want that oil to splash up at you. Oh, and we're getting that good sizzle right off the bat. Yes, please, and thank you. These are only going to take like six minutes to brown up and cook and be delicious. Liver and onions is a classic combination. Yay, hooray. Do you like liver and onions? I know. It, it, you either do or you don't. There's no in-between. But, you know, since you're going to be frying anyhow, you might as well do yourself up a little bit of onion ring. And there is way less chance of me being splashed by having my hand down low than, you know, if I dropped it from up here, it's going to splatter all over me. And you don't want to splatter in your eye. That's terrible. That hurts. Got a couple more in here. There we go. We got them all. One hand clean, one hand dirty, just like always. Got a little, got a little flour down here. Just wipe that off. All right, I'm gonna wash this hand, and I'm gonna let these go for five, six minutes. I'm going to keep my eagle eye on them so they don't burn up. But I want them crispy, brown, and delicious. You can use your spider just to flip them over. Make sure you're getting a good crunch on all the sides. Just be gentle. Now these are very lightly coated. We could have done a double dip. But you know, I'm already pushing my luck. Plus, my favorite part is the onion. The breading is a plus. All right, these are golden brown and delicious looking. I'm ready to take them out. If you don't have a spider, a slotted spoon will work just as well. Get those babies out of there. I also like if any of the breading has come off, I like to get that because I don't want those to crisp up and burn as we continue our frying projects. Move this on over. Get those little bits. Those little crunchy bits. They're the best. Alright, that looks good to me. I'm going to go ahead and pop this in my oven to stay warm. And now let's go ahead and get on with our chicken wings. So I have just dusted these in a little bit of that seasonal. And I'm going to go ahead and just pop these right on in. That's exactly why we do not um, fill our oil all the way to the top. Because these are frozen. And we do not want a grease fire. We don't want that to splatter or run all over the top or what have you. So yep, that's why we never fill our grease all the way to the top.
These are really big frozen chicken wings. They're huge. That's a big sucker. That's almost the size of a drumstick. So we are going to let these go for about 15 to 20 minutes until they look really good and crispy. And, you know, if we're unsure, we're going to take an internal temperature. Make sure they're getting to 165 degrees. There we go. Safe and sound. While those are frying away, I'm going to go ahead and get my sauce ready. Now, I am using a Texas Pete's wing sauce. This is fiery sweet, and it is completely delicious. And it was $7.99. I picked this up as a manager special for $4, and it is fabulous. It doesn't need anything from me, and it does have carbs in it, and it does have a pretty good amount of salt. But like I said, we're splurging tonight. So I'm going to dump about half this bottle in there. Well, maybe a, okay, maybe a little bit more. About a third of the bottle right inside of my big um, stainless steel bowl. Because I'm going to toss those wings in it before we put them in the oven. Um, and that's going to coat those all. And then while they're in the oven, that'll just really make them extra special and delicious. It's my favorite way. Oh, yeah. I love fried wings. Okay, these wings are big and meaty. And they're going to take a little bit of time. So I'm just letting them go. I'm thinking these are going to be closer to the 20-minute mark than the 15-minute mark. But that's fine. Because we still have some preparation. So I've got my chicken livers. And I drained off most of the milk. And, um... Now I'm going to go ahead and just roll these right on in to whatever egg I have here at the bottom of this bowl. And I'm going to need another pair of tongs. These will do just fine. I have a bazillion pairs of tongs and never the one I want right there at that moment. I don't know why. All right, I'm going to go ahead and just run these around in that egg mixture, getting those all coated and delicious. Now these livers, I am going to double dip these. Absolutely. And throw them into that dredging flour and the cornstarch and the spices and the seasonings. Yes, please and thank you. And get those all in there. Just like that. Oh, they're going to be so good. I can hardly wait. Andrew's been in here about a million times watching. Those look good. Those look good. Yeah, baby, it's going to be good. He's so excited about fried food night. All right, there we go. Get this all closed up. Got a little egg drippage on the side. And I'm just going to yeah, shake these all up. Get those all ready. Hot diggity. Get those all covered. And I'm not going to save any of that dredging flour. If anything's left over at the end, well, I'm just going to pitch it in the whole bag to go with it. The whole kit and caboodle. It'll be fine. I'm not worried about it. Okay. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put these back into the egg for their double dip. Back into the egg. Those are smelling good. They're smelling fantastic. Now, I was thinking that if you do not like hot wings, if you are opposed to the heat, if you just cannot take it, well, baby, don't worry about it. So, you know what I have over there? I have a little bit of that ranch powder. And if I was opposed to the heat, when these came off of the fryer, I would take that ranch seasoning powder, and I would just go ahead and sprinkle that all over them. And that would be completely delicious. Yeah. Especially if you have kids, and they can't take it. You know, Bangkok hot. Nothing wrong with that. Go ahead and roll these around. 
in that remaining egg. Let that soak them up. Yes, please and thank you. Evidently, I missed an onion ring. So we'll just go ahead and fry that along with the liver. So it'll be fine. It'll be a-okay. Could you dip your wings? Yeah, you could. I like just the real crispy skin and that delicious sauce. That's my preference. But baby, you can do whatever you want. It's your kitchen. Okay, we're going to put these back in for another roll around in the flour. Try to keep one hand clean and the other hand, well, you know, kind of gross. There we go. Toss that spare onion ring in there. I don't know how I missed it, but it'll still be good. We'll just take it out because these um, chicken livers are probably going to take about 10 to 12 minutes to get really good and crispy and cooked all the way through. And that onion ring, you know, six minutes, six minutes. So we'll just watch for it. Keep our eagle eye out for it. All right, there we go. And I'm going to go ahead and just roll these around in whatever flour is in there. Get that coating on all over everything. It's going to be delicious. I can hardly wait. And we have probably about six more minutes on our um, on our wings. And I'll bring you back. I'm going to wash my hands. We'll get these out of the we'll get these out of the oil. Okay, these wings are ready. They are so brown and completely yummy and delicious looking. I'm gonna just try to get as much oil off of them as possible. Gonna throw them right into that Texas Peace fiery wing sauce. Yes, please and thank you. Whoops. Careful. Almost splattered myself there. All right. Fantastic. And then, you know, just give them a little shake up. Just toss them around in there. You're no good at the toss. Well, I'm not any good at the toss either. I'm just going to get a spoon and give those all a good run around in there. I don't have like a fry daddy because we don't fry often enough to make it worthwhile and this works just fine and this is also going to allow us to okay i'm going to turn my heat down just a little bit because it's shot up and i don't want to i don't want to um cook on too high because i don't want to burn my 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 chicken livers yeah i want them to be good okay fantastic Fantastic. Those are looking good. Those are looking excellent. If you didn't want to use the wing sauce, I would throw them into a bowl like this and then go ahead and get some of your, you know, your Hidden Valley or your Dollar Store Ranch. Just go ahead and sprinkle that on top. Get those all seasoned, yummy, and delicious. It'll be all right. Let's grab our warming rack here and... I'm going to go ahead and just put these right over here next to my onion rings. Yes, please and thank you. going to make sure I put plenty of sauce on that. I've got some sauce reserved on the side for, you know, a little extra. If you want an extra little bit of hot, a little bit of extra dip. Maybe you want to put your onion rings in it. It's okay by me, baby. All right. Let's go ahead and put this back into the oven to stay toasty and warm. And if you've got a big crowd, you might have to do this and get her some batches. Like maybe your wings go out first. Maybe your onion rings go out next. Maybe your chicken livers. You know, you get whatever, whatever rocks your boat. All right. One hand clean, one hand dirty. Let's keep that up because that's working out pretty well. Let's grab some chicken livers and go ahead and drop these in. And I'm going to do these just like the onion rings. I'm going to drop them in close to the close to the uh, grease, close to the oil, so I'm not getting the splash up, not getting the burn.
but soaking them in that milk is going to take most of that metallic iron taste out of them and they are going to be so good All right, I've got all of them in there, but I am also going to go ahead and just include a few of those little crispy bits of the flour and what have you, the egg mixture, because have you ever got a bucket of chicken and you have like the little crispy bits at the bottom? That is my absolute plate favorite. Now, I'll make everybody's plate and I'll just eat the crispy bits sometimes. Well, I used to. Anyhow. We're not going to fight over the crispy bits today. Andrew can have them. And I'll just go ahead and put that right on in there. That's going to go right into the trash. Still got one hand clean. So I'm going to roll those around. As those um, cook up, they're going to float to the top. They're going to get brown and delicious. And uh, probably seven to 12 minutes for your chicken liver. Yeah, I'm gonna wash my hands. I'm gonna get cleaned up here a little bit. I got a few minutes of cook time. I'll be right back. All right, my lovies. Well, I think these are ready to come out. It has been almost exactly 12 minutes. And let me just tell you that these look super duper. They look crispy. They look delicious. Oh yeah, they look fantastic golden brown and delicious yes please and thank you i'm going to go ahead and just scoop these right on here into our pan i'm going to give them a little bit of salt as they're coming out that paper towel's doing its job thank you very much Got to remember to get all the little crispy bits because I love them. I might I might have a few of those crispy bits. I don't think I'm going to. We got crispy bits, Andrew. He's walking away. He can't hear when I'm not looking at him. Okay. There we go. There we go. Fantastic. Yep. Yep, I think that looks good. Let me get another. There we go. Yeah, I think that looks so good. So we've got our onion rings right up front. We have our chicken livers. We have our hot wings. We have a whole menagerie of fried foods, delicious foods, tons of sauces. Now we've got all the things. We have the wings. We have the chicken livers. We have the onion rings yes please and thank you my mother would be so excited um we have a little bit of kale coleslaw yeah just you know because you've got to have a little salad to cut all of the delicious you know fats and fried foods that we're having just a little everything in moderation baby we've got the um honey mustard the pickle dry uh the pickle dip and then a little bit of crudite. We've got chips. We've got all the things. We're ready for our, you know, Super Bowl celebration. Yeah, this is like the pregame. Anyhow, I'm super excited about it. And yeah, I don't care who wins. I really don't. I couldn't care less. You know what? I like the food. I like being with people that I love. I like the food. Um, oh, yeah. I love the commercials. So I just saw this commercial and it's a pre-Super Bowl commercial, kind of like my pre-Super Bowl celebration here. Pre-Super Bowl uh, commercial with Arnold Schwarzenegger. I forgot to take this off. Remember to take your oil off the heat. Safety first, turn your oven off. So it had Arnold Schwarzenegger and I think it was a State Farm commercial. Anyhow, he can't say neighbor, neighbor. He says, neighbor, 
anyhow, it was hysterical. It made me laugh. And, um, yeah, they've got him, you know, diving into fires and, you know, uh, telescoping off of a helicopter and saving a pregnant lady. Anyhow, but he can't say neighbor. He's, yeah, neighbor. Anyhow, I thought that was great. Enjoy the commercials. Enjoy the Super Bowl. I hope your team wins, whichever, you know. Anyhow, have a great day. And maybe this added a little inspiration for you. If you've never had the chicken livers, it's worth giving them a whirl. Yeah, soak them in the milk. That makes all the difference. All right, my lovies, be good, be careful, look both ways, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching Crazy But Not Dangerous. Bye now.